Episode 62. It is indeed Lucius. The tree that Roger was on was surrounded by beastmen. The tigers took turns trying to climb up the tree, but the highest any of them managed to climb was ten odd meters high. Roger only had to scurry up to easily get out of danger. With the great commotion going on here, Blair started getting uneasy. Roger had been gone for too long. Stephen, let's go and take a look. Blair's face was a little pale. Perhaps it was because she was cold, but Stephen attributed it to that group of beast men. Okay. Although no emotion could be detected in his voice, his heart was overwhelmed by a deadly desire to kill now. It seemed like his territorial sense had weakened. If this happened in the past, those beastmen who intruded upon his territory would long have been dead. No way would they still be making a ruckus and startling his mate now. With Blair in his arms, Stephen slithered over. Roger, who was the first to spot them, roared with excitement on the tree. It's Roger, Blair said, pointing at the leopard on the tree. The tiger beast men froze, then looked towards the snake beast man uniformly, their bodies overtaken by caution and fear. Roger ran along the tree branch and onto the tree right above Blair, then jumped down and stood with them. Roger rubbed his face against Blair's calf intimately, then licked the dried mud off her calves. Tanya and her entourage of beast men had arrived too. Looking at her mate that was now lying on the ground, intense fury and hatred could be seen in Tanya's eyes. Bruce, who killed him? The wolf beast man howled at Roger. That was just as Tanya had thought. If the snake beast man wanted to kill them, he wouldn't have stopped at one. She ordered sternly, kill that leopard for me. It wasn't that she felt pained about the loss of that mate. She simply needed to regain some face, seeing that her mate had been killed. Roar! The tiger beast men roared unanimously, seemingly ready to attack. Roger's fur exploded as he got ready to climb onto a tree any moment now. He didn't feel fearful at all. There was no way these tigers and wolves could harm him in this forest. And when he got back to the village, he would be under the protection of his tribe. Even if there was only one four-striped beast man in their leopard tribe, they now had Steven with them. You really killed someone? Blair's voice snapped Roger out of his thoughts. He looked up at her. Seeing her pale face, his heart rose to his throat. (laughs) Hmph! Roger let out an aggrieved sound. It was perfectly normal for beast men to fight while hunting but Roger understood how soft-hearted Blair was. Will she dislike me because I was too violent? They had interacted for some time now, so Blair understood the meaning behind some of the noises Roger made, like this one. Blair felt frightened, but facing so many ferocious beasts, she was most worried about Roger's safety. Stephen? Blair tugged at Stephen's arm and stared at him with a pleading look. Stephen gently patted her shoulder and placed her on the ground. He then swept his tail as he faced the enemies, bloodthirst flickering in his red eyes. With the assurance that Stephen wouldn't stand by and do nothing, Blair felt slightly more at ease. Tanya seemed unfazed by the four-striped snake beast man. Rex, you go deal with him. Rex didn't so much as glance at Tanya. He ran towards Blair's side on his four limbs. Behind him, Tanya's mates revealed their fangs as they prepared to pounce on and kill the leopard. The startled Blair couldn't help hiding behind Stephen as she gazed at the white tiger's ferocious face. Then, a bright and clear screech of an eagle could be heard from the skies. A black figure came dashing down, landing on a tree branch by Blair. Roger let out a low growl and dug his claws into the ground. As it was a puddle of water under his front paw, his claws were now filthy and full of wet mud. 
Tanya cast a glance at the Black Eagle and was about to look away when she realized something that made her widen her eyes. It's him. Tanya's countenance looked extremely terrible. She roared, hurry up and attack. Roar! On that command, the tiger beast men rushed up in unison. Tanya's expression was contorted. This was the third time. Blair had snatched three males away from her. She had chosen this three-striped beast man out of the more than 10 eagle beast men of suitable age as he was the strongest one among them. She used to wonder why this eagle beast man was lukewarm towards her. So it turned out he was bewitched by Blair? Blair, you and I are sworn enemies. Upon hearing the tiger beast men's movements, Rex turned around vigorously. Unlike his usual restrained demeanor, he now exuded the wild and arrogant aura of a powerful beast man. Roar! The white tiger opened its mouth and let out a deafening roar of anger. The sound made by the tiger beast men earlier sounded like the mewing of a cat in comparison. Scared out of their wits, the tigers repeatedly retreated, caught in a fluster all of a sudden. Blair paused in surprise. Isn't Rex Tanya's mate? Why is he defecting? Tanya was caught by surprise too. When she snapped out of her shock, she was consumed by an uncontrollable rage. Rex, didn't you say you didn't want to become mates and only wish to be my guardian? She then sneered. There's no use in you helping her. Why don't you look at your reflection in the water? How can Blair possibly fancy you? Rex's silver eyes shrunk violently. He turned around and looked at Blair, who was staring at him in a dazed manner. The eyes of the human and beast met. Gazing at those clear and innocent eyes, Rex instantly became clear-headed. I'm not planning to become mates, but I'm also willing to be your guardian. More importantly, I will protect my beloved female. Rex blocked before Blair like a steady rock, growling the tiger's language in his deep voice. When you clash with her, I will forever stand on her side. Tanya's expression changed and she said fiercely, don't let me see you appear in the tiger tribe again. She glared viciously at Blair before kicking the tiger beneath her. Let's go. Although Tanya's attitude was aggressive, her mates appeared sad and defeated. Tanya was spoiled since she was young. She had never suffered such humiliation in her entire life. This was all caused by the new female, Blair. She swore she wouldn't let Blair lead an easy life from now on. Looking as the enemies left, Stephen's body lurched forward, feeling pity that he had lost his prey. With the soft, warm, and petite hand in his hand, Stephen's desire to kill faded. He lifted her up. Are you cold? He asked as he glanced at her feet. Blair shook her head. Now that the fight was over, the Black Eagle quietly flew high up into the skies. Rex gazed at the back views of Tanya's group as they left. Although his body was still strong, it somehow exuded sadness. Rex, Blair called out to him softly. Rex turned around to look at her and responded with a roar. His voice was much deeper than Roger's. Even in that one syllable word, one could sense his might. Blair said, Tanya forbade you from returning to the tiger tribe. Will you be in trouble? Will the ape king use this opportunity to harm you? Rex's upper body lowered before straightening and transforming into a human. With a crop of white short hair and coupled with a hideous scar on his face, he looked like a prisoner. The ape king's strongest assistant, the wolf king, is only a four-striped beast man. Based on his capabilities, he's not able to kill me. Don't worry, Rex said in his deep voice. Blair tried her best to maintain her gaze on Rex's upper body. She relaxed and smiled. That's great. Gazing at Blair's smiling face, Rex's heart raced wildly. 
He stared at her dazedly as though nothing else existed around them. All he could see was the beautiful Blair before him. You're so beautiful. Rex couldn't resist saying that out loud. Perhaps he didn't even realize what he was saying. It was always nice to be complimented by someone of the opposite sex, especially if that person was someone so powerful. In the eyes of the other females, perhaps Rex was ugly, ferocious, unreasonable. But in Blair's eyes, she saw someone full of charisma and masculine charm. In any case, she didn't at all find him ugly. Hence, Blair's face flushed very quickly. Her body moved in embarrassment. Thank you for the compliment. It was only then that Rex realized what he had just said. His tanned face turned awkward. Stephen held Blair tightly in his arms, his gaze fixed intently upon Rex. Rex instantly retreated two steps and said, I'll go back to the city now. Blair waved at him. Goodbye! After the white tiger disappeared from sight, Stephen asked in a dark tone, You like him? Who? Rex? Blair rolled her eyes at Stephen. How can I possibly like someone I don't even know all that well? Blair had to admit that she felt a little nervous facing Rex, but that was more of an admiration of a handsome man. Rex's aura was too strong. Any girl would be nervous in his presence, all right? But you looked like you were flushed just now. Roger had transformed into a human since God knows when. A sense of reprimand and a hint of aggrievedness could be seen in his expression. Blair shrieked loudly. Her face was even more flushed now, and she was caught between laughter and tears. This is normal, all right? When someone confessed to me in the past, I felt embarrassed, but I didn't accept any of them. Blair was exasperated, with Stephen and Roger questioning her as though she had committed adultery. Stephen glanced coldly at her. That it better be the case. Shaking his tail, Stephen slithered back with Blair lying her head on his shoulders and gazing at Roger, who followed behind. Stephen is so aggressive toward my suitors. Isn't Roger afraid? This fellow sure isn't afraid of death. Let's hurry back home, lest the short-winged birds are eaten by the wild beasts, Roger said. Whatever. Blair responded as she raised her head to look at the skies. A black eagle perched on a tree branch screeched. Blair flashed at a smile. That's Lucius indeed. That's how he sounds. Blair suddenly understood something. No wonder Lucius had never appeared before her. He was fearful of Stephen, probably. After all, Stephen nearly poisoned him to death, and he even snatched her away from Stephen. These two were sworn enemies. If he dared to appear before her, Stephen would probably pounce on him in a second. The three of them went back to their original spot. Thankfully, their stuff was still intact. That bound short-winged bird even attracted another short-winged bird with feathers more vibrant and colorful than hers. Clearly, this was a male bird. Upon seeing that it was a male bird, Roger was about to pounce upon and kill it when Blair hurriedly stopped him. Spare him! Roar! Roger loosened his bite on the male bird at the crucial moment, then transformed into a human and tied its wings up with vines as well. 